My last video was titled, How to Lose Weight in 10 Minutes. I think some of you took that to mean in a actual 10 minutes you could lose weight, not that I was going to explain it in 10 minutes. That may have been two weeks ago. I've had a bit of an interesting couple of weeks. In fact, something happened on Friday a week ago, which this past Friday caused me to reconsider a lot of the stuff that I'd been preaching and living the last year and then have a paradigm shift and get me back on track. So we're going to talk about that today. But first, I'm Chip. This channel is CP59FIT. It's subtitled Unconventional Healthy Living Strategies. You've, and this is a 10x summer challenge, which is a challenge to see if I get monetized or lose weight first. So I'll get into those statistics a little bit later, but let me tell you of the phenomenal change that has happened in this past week. I'm not going to tell you how much weight I lost. Maybe you can see it <laughs> in my face. So anyway, I must have taken my own advice over the last uh, two weeks. Actually, last month. I've had phenomenal, what I consider phenomenal weight loss, but I want to tell you more. This will be more personal and transparent than I am a lot of days, and it won't be as much science, because I want to tell you what happened and all the thought processes I've gone through over the last 10 days. And I will tell you this back, I don't know, was it 30 years ago, 40 years ago when I went through the police academy? I think I graduated college about 40. No, I graduated high school 40 years ago. So it hasn't been much less than that since I graduated college. And shortly thereafter, well, maybe two years, I went through a police academy with the Virginia State Parks. One of the things they always taught is you will, we're training you, we're repetitively training you so that you will automatically react to your training. Because when you're in a shootout, when you're chasing somebody, when you're on foot chasing somebody, once you catch them, you don't have time to think, oh, I'm supposed to do this and this and this. You just do. And, you know, I've been studying under Dr. Benjamin Hardy for, I studied 18 months. It was the last half of 2021 and all of 2022. Then I moved. No, I moved in 2022, I think. <laughs> yeah, I finished the job at the PD, the civilian job at the PD in Texas, October of 21. And I think I moved in February 22. And I was still going through the course. I was actually going through the course when I began house sitting in uh, the summer of 2022, and even when I was at the one, the long one in North Carolina over Christmas into 2023. I did not renew in 2023, and he shut it down at the end of 2023. But he's still doing higher level stuff on YouTube, even though he's basically shut down his YouTube channel. I am not planning to do that. But all of that training kicked in this week when Friday a week ago, I woke up and had a text and a call at 12.15 in the morning. Thank goodness I keep my phone on do not disturb and or airplane mode and it will be more so there going forward. So if if you have my phone number and you try to reach me there, it might be quicker to message on my YouTube channel because I'm basically, well, let me tell you what's happening and then I'll tell you why I'm ignoring my phone even more. I hope to ignore my phone even more moving forward. I woke up to a message, a text message, and a phone call from a high school friend's parents. His mother had texted me. His father had called me because this is the young man that tried to get me on at the, uh, the farm foundation as an armed security guard when I first got here. His dad is a retired police officer. His mother's a realtor. They grew up. They lived about three houses, maybe four, down the street from me when I grew up. The young man was in Boy Scouts with me. And they were sending me a message from a lady that lived across the street from them and about three houses down, but apparently didn't move in until I went to college or was away at college. So I never knew her, but she knew them, had a lot of respect for them, and is a lieutenant at a university 
police department over in DC. I won't name the, the university quite yet, and I may not name it at all, because I haven't even told them my decision yet, but I'm telling you, and I'm telling you the process I went through to get there. But anyway, they were, she was looking for an evening shift supervisor for Thursday and Friday nights, so two nights a week, basically 16 hours. I'm working about 25 to 30 hours a week at Costco right now. Minimum of 24. The highest I think I've been is like 35. So another 16 would be a full-time work week. Not to mention I'm currently driving an hour to Costco and DC is another hour past there. I may have already told you that in next Sunday I'm planning to give up this rental in West Virginia to go do a house sit for a doctor friend in South Riding, which is 15 minutes south of my dad's, which is 15 minutes from Costco. So about 30 minutes from Costco versus 55 here. So I've been looking for rentals down there that I could take through this furnished finder site I use to find rentals. And so I could get closer to DC you know, this was all going through my head. It seemed like a very, very good offer. Well, I won't say offer. They haven't. They technically have offered me the job, but they haven't put it in writing. And there's no rate of pay yet that I'm aware of. They were going to have to send all my resumes and credentials off to human resources to find out what I was going to get paid. That's a little bit concerning to me. And I would have to learn American Sign Language because it is a school for deaf and hard of hearing people. So most of the other officers are born deaf or develop deafness very quickly. So I'd be talking with my hands and I don't know American Sign Language, even though I understand it's very easy to learn. But my whole planning up to this point has to been to learn Spanish if I learned a second language. And I guess a third language wouldn't be that bad. But that's just another layer of things that I don't want to deal with at the moment. <laughs> the other really nice benefit is because it's a private college, it uh, is eligible for federal benefits and federal retirement. And apparently Congress funds about 90% of this particular university. It's also completely fenced and gated, which is a big plus in D.C. because crime is through the roof. In fact, I only had to be like two miles off the interstate to their gate, which made me feel a little bit better because carjacking and mugging is, is bad in D.C. And I had pretty much decided I was going to take it. In fact, our conversation, I met the uh, interim acting commander because the commander is out on a medical leave. I'm not going to give you all the details, but anyway, the acting commander and the lieutenant I talked to were very kind, very encouraging. They liked me. They wanted me to work there. I thought it was a good deal. Then I came home and started talking to other campus police officers I know. Oh, and by the way, I would be a special police officer under the Metropolitan PD with jurisdiction only on campus as a unarmed basically security guard, but they call it campus police officer. I'm not real familiar with police officers that don't have guns, except when I was a park ranger and we had one in the safe. <laughs> you had to share, <laughs> you know, so wouldn't be that different from some of my past experiences. But my knee, I have a niece in this local area who had been working for a nonprofit charity in D.C. for, I think, pretty much since before the pandemic. So I guess she worked from home a lot, but she's been over there a lot too. And actually had an attempted mugging or mugging or something occur recently and was very concerned about me going over there to work, which I had my own concerns with a police background. And I would have been only the second officer on the force that had street law enforcement experience other than um, I mean, if you're deaf, where would you really do real street police work? Even though I understand there's a deaf uh, agent with the FBI that they've done a documentary on, and she's very good. So I'm not saying it couldn't happen. It just generally doesn't happen. 
So these other officers just are campus police and just in the deaf community. So they sent me onboarding papers Wednesday and I took them with me Thursday to get them notarized at the bank on my dad's campus. So I went to lunch with this niece and with dad and we didn't really discuss the job, but uh, I'm not gonna discuss what we discussed. Family stuff, let's put it that way, and medical stuff. She's actually watched some of my videos, which kind of surprised me. She leans more to vegetable-based stuff than animal paint. I thought, but she ate a hamburger with us, so I was and a salad. So good for her. I'm glad she's doing both. But driving back the hour to West Virginia, I got thinking, and I'm like, okay, if I'm a supervisor, what does a police super supervisor do? What's I know they do reports. I knew they do schedules, all that stuff. That's fine. But the main thing you need experience in is de-escalation of situations. So I'm thinking if I get called because an officer is crossways with somebody and I can't do the sign language properly, I'm having to ask him or text him. We have these. They, they said I'd have a phone and a radio that I could text on. So I'm having to text him and he's texting me. I thought that's not very fair to the student or employee that he's he or she's in a conflict with if I'm only getting one side of the story. So I thought, hmm, that kind of defeats the purpose of being the supervisor if I can only base my ruling or my judgment on part of the story because I wouldn't understand what the other person, I guess the other person could text me. I hadn't thought about that until right now, but anyway... I just thought it was more complicated than I wanted to participate in at this point in my life. And then I started thinking about all the stuff Dr. Hardy had taught me over the past, what's it been, three years? That I had scheduled a ketone goal, keystone goal for my life, and that was my health. Well, I just got a bookmark made. I don't know what all that's about, but we'll get it uploaded and it should be one big video. And it had nothing to do with going back into police work or going into the district. You know, when I first got the text, I'm like, ugh, D.C. <laughs> I didn't lose anything over there. I have no reason to go. I would not even take a house sit in D.C. because they are armed robbery, armed robbing you of your dogs. And I know that most of those just go into dog fighting and they get the weak ones or the fluffy ones so that the pit bulls or whoever the mean dogs are I know there's some very sweet, sweet pit bulls, but in dog fighting, which is illegal most places, that's where most lost and abandoned pets or dogs end up. And I didn't want to be walking somebody's dog and get a gun in my face and not have a gun because it's DC. And that was the other thing with this special police permit. I said, does that authorize me to carry a gun in DC? She said, nope, not on the campus, not in the city, nowhere. Don't even bring it to work if you have one. I thought, well, that, the reason there's crime in D.C. is guns are illegal <laughs> and every, only the bad guys have them. So I didn't want to be a target either, really, or a target for carjacking, which is probably more probable on the mile and a half from the interstate to the campus. So maybe I'm being a big sissy about it, but what it is, is it's not aligning. You know, I made a big leap video when I left the city I made another big leap, or maybe that was my another big leap when I left the city. My first big leap was, I guess, going into Parnamore. So I'm about big leaps. I'm about keystone goals and saying no to more stuff. You know, I became a minimal, minimalist almost when I sold my house and then gave up my apartment in Fort Worth to go on this house sitting, pet sitting, spend time with mom and dad journey. And I have no regrets. Everything's going well, but I, I am planning to turn down this job at the university so I can concentrate on this channel, which is about my health and sharing with you. So maybe your health can improve. Also, I don't look that as that as a loss. I look at it as a gain. And then I got on Facebook yesterday, I think and saw an announcement from Dr. Hardy about a condensed, intensive program he's offering 
October, November, December. So I dug through my emails, and of course I'd gotten an email from whom I hadn't paid any attention to. And I know last year he offered it for like three or four thousand dollars. I'm like, well, maybe when you come down, I will do that. I've I'm working, so I don't go into my savings. I mean, I I lived off of savings basically two years with a little job here and there, but I could not cont I chose not to continue that. That's why I went back to work. But he had lowered the price to under a thousand dollars this year, and I'm moving, and I'm going to save about anywhere from two fifty to one o five on the next rental. And I figure I've been spending almost two hundred dollars in gas on the one hour commute. That's my neighbor roommate fumigating her room because she's got limes and other autoimmune. So we talk about carnivore quite a bit, and it seems she seems to be trying alternative things but let's get back to the my stuff so anyway i think i'm going to be saving about 300 dollars a month and it was 997 for three months with a money back guarantee if you hit your goal he will refund your money and really he's about getting your your five-year plan reduced to three months or at least getting very close to it and as you know, my long-term plan is to get this channel monetized. And that's what this whole Summer Challenge Sunday posting updates is about. So get ready for some radical transformation. And I think that's the name of his next book, Radical Transformation. So he's trying to sell books too. And I probably will buy one. I haven't bought the last two. But I bought like 20 of The Gap and the Gain to get into the program for 2023 because if you sell a lot when it first comes out, then it's higher on the New York bestseller list, which adds to more sales. So anyway, this week has been a lot of trying to move, deciding if I wanted that other job, and if so, where would I live? I would probably live even closer to D.C., which prospects down there are few and far between that I'd be willing to live in. This place is lovely. I kind of hate to give it up, but I also don't want to be down the the West Virginia roads in a snowstorm. So let's get to the analytics. I told you I've lost a lot of weight. We'll start with the weight because my last video was about how to lose weight. And I think I followed Zoe's advice and probably just cut down the carbs a little bit more and started eating more strict carnivore. But on August the 15th, or I should say from August the 15th till September the 15th, which is today, I have lost 11 pounds, which is not something to shout from the rooftops, but compared that I had gained, what, 30 pounds since mom's death, that's a good start. <laughs> and it's actually very fast for me. In fact, in the last week, I have lost 4.4. I'm down to 221, which is only 11 pounds higher than my first visit with the doctor after the stroke in 2015. So I've only gained 11 pounds from that point in nine years, even though I've been up 50 pounds, <laughs> down 20 pounds, you know, all 10 pounds or whatever. I've been as low as like 199, and I've been as high as about 259. So to be at 221, what is that? 38 pounds down. Of course, the ultimate goal is 185, and... I think this, uh, I think the summer solstice is maybe next week or something, two weeks maybe, and that's when this challenge was going to end, and now I've signed up, paid good money that I didn't really have <laughs> to do this intensive program with the goal of getting these numbers up, and here we go, I'm going to pull my computer over and share my YouTube numbers instead of turning the camera around and all that. Okay, it looks like I may have gotten one more subscriber since we last talked. Let me go back to that page. Yes, I'm at 100, where to go, dashboard. At 154 subscribers. I think I was at 153 two weeks ago, so that's not doing anything major. But watch time is going up and that's a big thing. It says I'm at 205.7 
which is this, about the same as usual. Yeah, and here it says subscribers plus one in the last 28 days. I should maybe just read more. Okay. And remember when we started this channel, I was like 20% lower on watch time than I was the previous 365 days. Now I'm at 2,351.4 hours for the last 365 days. And it says about the same as the previous 365 days. Woo -hoo. It says we're 20% less views than the previous 365. So that means people are watching longer, which is even better because that's what the YouTube algorithm lives, likes. And I'm 20 plus 20 subscribers in the last 365 days. So to get to a thousand at 20 a year, going to take a long time. That's why I'm paying to meet somebody that's going to push me or pull me, whatever the term is, to get there or get real close by December. And so my, yeah, I already told you what the actual watch time hours were, 2,351. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now for just a little bit of a annoying thing that happened at 11 o'clock this afternoon. Today is Sunday, by the way. I think it's September 15th, is Costco called me at 11 a.m. I had my phone on Do Not Disturb. I'd left it upstairs because I was down cleaning. I'm like, it's on Do Not Disturb. I'm not going to hear it anyway. Left a message. They want me to come in at midnight or one today because they had a unexpected overnight where somebody's going to come in and redo the self-checkout machines or something. And they want me. I. They don't know what I'm going to do, but I... When I've done this in the past, it's basically like babysitting the contractors. You know, if they need a fuse turned off, they need a tool, something, I go get it. So it is actually not a real hard gig, but they moved me from starting at 5 a.m. I told them I could make it by 1 because I'm an hour away. But I was also in the process of packing today, so I could, I've had Saturday and Sunday off. Excuse me. And because I've been to the farm and because I bought an air fryer and a excuse me, a nightstand and a countertop ice maker and uniform, well, I call them uniforms, clothes to wear to work like five different outfits and work shoes. My car was pretty full when I moved here, so it's going to take, if I can take partial loads to dad's tomorrow, and I've got Tuesday off and then take another partial load Wednesday by um, Saturday gets here. Hopefully I can put everything in the car head down there and not have to come back even though I'd still have like a night I could stay here that ten dollars worth of gas is a lot that's why I'm saying I probably spend about two hundred dollars a month because I work 20 days a month five days a week for four weeks and I use a good gallon each way and I'm getting some discounts now which is making the cost go down a little bit but I was real and if I go to dad's that's another gallon from Costco to his and back or we go to lunch or whatever so anyway I'm spending about three gallons a day which is about I think gas is getting to about three dollars a gallon down to about three dollars a gallon here so maybe my numbers are a little bit off but I'll be happy to save that so I don't see why I should drive back up here when I if I don't have to I can stay at dad's or I'm gonna do a little bit of pet sitting in October I'll tell you more about that when I'm there but anyway thank you for all the help we're going to get this done. Just sit back and watch because the next three months, we're going to rock and roll. Go lose some weight, however you want to do it. I'm not giving advice on that today, but I'm happy that I'm trending down, even though my diet way of eating has not been perfect. Costco frequently puts fruit out and uh, I think it's Fresh Fruit Friday. And then they put going out of date ice cream in the freezer. I tried to get the real ice cream. I found out that those drumstick cones are made with vegetable oil. Ugh. It won't even melt apparently, but they haven't had one in there since I saw the documentary. I'm gonna try it <laughs> the next time they put some in there, but avoid the Nestle drumstick stuff, if that's true. We'll talk to you hopefully on Wednesday. Maybe I'll get a video done Tuesday, but I'm gonna try to get this uploaded before I go to dad's. So I'm going in early. I might even go in to take the nap there instead of here. Today's just all discombobulated. God bless. Love you. Subscribe. Hit the button. Thanks. Up and down. <laughs> Thumbs up, I guess. Oh, whatever. Bye-bye.